Happy Halloween everyone, my name is George, and today we got a special review, because today's Halloween, and it's going to be on The Nightmare Before Christmas, which combines Halloween and Christmas together. Now, it's also called Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, although it's not directed by Tim Burton, but he is a producer for this film. It's based off a poem he wrote in 1982. And this was a project he wanted to do since then, either as a short film or a 30-minute TV feature. But eventually, got to make it. It came out in 1993. And it is about Jack Skellington, the pumpkin, the pumpkin king of Halloween Town. And he's an idol, a celebrity of this town. Everyone looks up to him. But he's growing weary of doing the same thing over and over again. And... No one really understands him except for this rag doll named Sally who has feelings for him. But once he discovers Christmas, he wants to do Christmas and it becomes this obsession where he starts to lose himself in this great blend of comedy and drama. So this is a stop motion movie and it took a while to make. And for those of you who don't really understand stop motion, stop motion does take a while. Apparently this used over 109,000 different frames for this movie and I never did stop motion but stop motion was some of the early work that I watched on YouTube when I first discovered YouTube and it would take a while for the YouTubers that did stop motion to make the next stop motion video not just because they have personal lives outside of YouTube like that's a reason but also because it takes a while to get the stop motion right like, it's kind of hard to explain, but obviously, like, you have all these different frames, and it's a lot of work to get it right. And they had to use so many different puppets for this film. Uh, Jack Skeleton himself had, like, several different heads because of his uh, expressions. And this was also going on when Tim Burton was also filming Batman Returns. And right before, and around the time he was beginning production on Ed Wood. So this was a very time consuming project. Production began two years before this movie came out. And it's only like, it's less than an hour and 30 minutes. So you would think like, how would a small, a movie that has like a small amount of time, like take so much work? Well, like I said, the stop motion work, creating all these different puppets and all these different frames. And while it's a short film, it's a phenomenal film. Basically, this covers everything that needs to be covered from Jack's weariness of Halloween to, to his obsession with Christmas. And this was, I don't think, even ever meant to be a long movie to begin with because Burton's original ideas were to make it a short film. So it's as long as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be longer. Uh, the characters work in this movie. Jack Skellington is a phenomenal character. He's a character I think sometimes we can relate to. Not like the celebrity status, but the fact that we grow weary of doing the same thing. And once we get obsessed with something, we can sometimes lose ourselves in that obsession. Like you see Jack going from the Pumpkin King to being very, very addicted to Christmas. You also have the character Sally, who, as I previously mentioned, is the only one who understands him. And she wants to help him, even if it going so far as to sabotage his Christmas. And I really like the like the designs of these characters. Like the puppet designs, they work very well. The set pieces also work very well. Danny Elfman's score is phenomenal as always. He basically does the score for any Tim Burton movie. Even this one, which Tim Burton didn't direct. So, the score is great. The songs are great. I like how you can have one song that is dramatic and then have like a more uplifting song. Like, what's this when he's in Christmas Town? Like, they really put a lot of effort into this, this movie that, while it's short, is still a great phenomenal movie. Uh, the main antagonists of this movie, the Oogie Boogie Man, great villain, very scary, very disturbing. I also like some of like 
some of like the indirect messaging, like them how the mayor's got like two faces, and you know, I like I don't know like what the story was with with the mayor, but having like a mayor that has two fa different faces, you got his like happy face and you got his like sad face. I feel like that's like a indirect swipe at two faced politicians. I don't know. That's just how I see it. I don't know if that was the intent, but yeah, this film is. Well, again, it's not directed by Tim Burton. It's still a special film because Tim Burton has never wanted a sequel to this film while Disney wants a sequel. They've, you know, had their ways of trying to make sequels like video game spinoffs or books. But yeah, they've never made a sequel to this film. And I feel like the way it ends, it doesn't need a sequel. It's perfect the way it is. Because how can you, like... Unless, like, you're doing, like, a full-on Halloween movie with Jack Skellington, like, are you going to recon the whole thing? Because it really doesn't need to be. And I really like how these these monsters, like, while they're trying to get an idea of Christmas, they fail miserably at it because they make these gifts that, like, terrorize rise the people. Um... <laughs> To the point where, like, the military has to, like, attack Jack, Jack Skellington. But, yeah, like, this movie has, as I said, excellent songs. Like, right from, from the beginning, like, it starts off with a song, This is Halloween. And even though this isn't a Tim Burton-directed movie, it's probably his most popular one. And probably his best work associated with him. Now, Tim Burton's a great director. He's made great movies like Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, Batman. But obviously, this is always going to be his most popular work. And it's and it's really hard to see like him ever topping something like this, whether as a producer or director. Now, was this the beginning of the end for Tim Burton's downfall or something like that or like the end of tim burton's greatness no he still had great movies coming out after this ed wood big fish uh sweeney todd but obviously it's kind of hard to see tim burton ever getting to this level again whether as a producer or a director um he's been in this remake phase for quite a while um, but oddly enough, he does not want a sequel to his greatest work, which I can understand because I don't think it needs a sequel. Now, this is always a must-watch for me on Halloween. Sometimes on Christmas, I'll watch it because it's a Halloween Christmas movie. But if I don't watch it around Christmas, it's not a big deal. I always got to make sure I at least watch it once on Halloween. But yeah, it's still a popular movie. It's got it's become a cult classic. Uh, I know for some sometimes like some theaters re-release this movie in theaters. I think one year they re-released it in 3D. I'm not too sure. But phenomenal stop motion work. And stop motion movies are still around. Um, I wish they can do more of this kind of stuff. But Disney this wasn't Disney's last attempt. A few years later, James and, they did James and Giant Peach. And I'm pretty sure they reused a Jack Skellington puppet, or head at least, for James and Giant Peach. Because in the scene where, in James and Giant Peach, where they're dealing with the uh, zombie skull, the zombie pirates in the water, like Jack Skellington's head is in there. So they obviously reuse it. But... I would say if they ever do revisit Nightmare Before Christmas, I feel like you gotta do it on stop motion. Because I feel like that takes some of the specialness out. Like, that's just my opinion. But, yes, this has all the Tim Burton formulas, the Danny Elfman score. And Danny Elfman also does the singing for Jack Skellington. Like, Chris Sarandon, sorry if I mispronounced that last name, does the voice. And he does a great job with the voice. The voice work is great in this movie. But Danny Elfman also does a great job with Jack Skellington's singing voice. For the longest time, I thought Danny Elfman did all the voice for Jack. But no, it's just the singing. Um, and Catherine O'Hara, who is known for being in Tim Burton movies like Beetlejuice, did the voice of Sally. She, she does a great job. And I really like the development of Jack and Sally's relationship to the point where 
he finally realizes how important Sally is. And at the end, we see them finally come together. And it's really hard for me to, like, give a definite answer as to whether or not I want them to revisit Nightmare Before Christmas. Maybe, like, as a special. But, again, it's really hard to see where the story can go after this. But, yeah, this is probably the best work Tim Burton was ever involved in. My favorite work of his. Um, in case you want to know what my favorite movie Tim Burton directed was, it is Beetlejuice. I didn't get a chance to review it this Halloween because we had some new movies come out this year. It was probably the busiest Halloween as far as new movies come comes in the last few years. Obviously due to the pandemic because a lot of these movies were postponed. So hopefully next year I can review movies like Beetlejuice and some other Tim Burton movies. I do have some Tim Burton movies I want to review this November, his Batman movies. I want to like review other superhero movies old movies and i think his two batman movies are two movies i want to touch upon this month but all in all the nightmare before christmas i still feel is a phenomenal movie i think it holds up very well today and i'm gonna give it an a plus and i highly recommend you go watch it it's on disney plus on freeform It'll probably be on free form for their 25 days of christmas or countdown to christmas if you didn't get a chance to watch it for their 31 days of Halloween. Um, and also you can probably find it on DVD or Blu-ray somewhere. Like this movie's been a movie came out 28 years ago. So you can probably access it on any on Disney Plus and on any physical media. So those are my thoughts on the nightmare before Christmas. And I wish I could talk about other Halloween themed movies or other Tim Burton themed movies this year but i didn't get a chance to because like i said new movies come out and some other stuff came up but hopefully i can at least review tim burton's batman movies for the month of november so what do you guys think about the nightmare before christmas do you guys love it do you guys think it's overrated because not everyone's gonna love this movie or appreciate this movie the stop motion work that was done let me know down in the comments below and I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Please share this with someone that loves The Nightmare Before Christmas. And once again, have a happy Halloween. Be safe. Uh, don't eat too much candy. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Take care, everyone.